good day everyone. And then Staktak, the President of the Philippine Society of Agriculture and Vine Systems Engineer. I would like to invite all Filipino engineers to join the fourth round of the Manila Water Foundation Prize for Engineering Excellence. This is a great opportunity to share your breakthrough technologies and be an inspiration to aspiring engineers in the country. It's been five years since Manila Water Foundation launched the prize which recognized and show appreciation to noteworthy Filipino engineers whose advancement and developments contribute in the field of water, sanitation, sustainability, and environment. And Manila Water Foundation is calling once again for our fellow engineers to be engaged in this significant endeavor. You could be our next awardee. Join the Engineers for Excellence Facebook group and Bible community to get updates about the price and tips on how to prepare your entries. Thank you and stay safe. Hi, I'm Engineer Rowen Elonga, Regional Director of the Department of Science and Technology in Western Visayas. I am inviting all fellow Filipino engineers to join the Manila Water Foundation Prize for Engineering Excellence. This is the fourth run of this nationwide search for outstanding engineers whose accomplishments have created positive impact and improved the lives of others. This is a great opportunity to share to the public the technologies and innovations you have developed. Your accomplishments will be an inspiration to all aspiring engineers in the country and encourage them to use science, technology, and innovation for community and national development. You could be our next awardee. For more information and updates, please join the Engineers for Excellence Facebook group and Viber community. Thank you. It is important for us to have a good basis when you are asked about structural integrity. Yan ang isa sa main reason bakit na gawa itong project na ito. Dahil of course, we're saving people's lives when there is a strong earthquake. I'm Dr. Francis Aldrin. I'm an inventor of the Universal Structural Health Evaluation and Recording System. Ang Pilipinas ay nasa tinatawag natin Pacific Ring of Fire. Kaya yung comes to a strong earthquake, lagi na riyan yan. The heart of Asher, the purpose of it is to save lives. It's very important for us because maybe someone na kilala mo, maan mo sa buhay, nasa panganib dahil hindi natin na monitor yung structural integrity ng buildings natin. Nandito ngayon yung tinatawag niyo Asher system. It is composed of two major components, the sensor or the accelerometer and the second one is the web portal. So yung sensor natin, it also have a view of the readings na nakukuha niya to the controller. Kinukuha niya lahat ng data pinagsasama-sama niya to provide alerts. Yung green, pag umilaw yan, it, that will tell people na gumalaw yung building. The movement is not so significant as long as the orange light doesn't turn on. Now, the red one, ito sa never na umilaw. Kasi pag umilaw yung red, ibig sabihin gumalaw siya ng sobra based sa disenyo niya. So, nandito rin yung mga warning logs natin kasi kailangan kinikip rin yung mga history records no, ng mga events and how your building performed with those events. Nandito yung web portal natin. So, yung data, kapadala niya automatically sa cloud. This is very useful you know, for managers or, or developers. 
the usher, I believe, provides for a more comprehensive and more beneficial functions in comparison with other earthquake recording instruments. They were able to combine no, the old concept with new technological breakthrough, not only for the benefit of the technical people, no, of engineers, but also the general public. Nakita naman ni Mayor Scobareno kung gaano ka-effective yung kanilang uh, accelerograph. So right away, mag-instruct si Mayor na for case. Maganda tong usher. Makikita mo na makaka-prevent ka, ma-evacuate mo agad yung mga tao kasi mamamonitor niya agad kung may movement. Approved to ng DOST. Ito, Filipino-made. Kaya proud kami kay Dr. Alden Uy at uh, sa Usher Technologies. Yes, of course, Dr. Uy deserves that award po. He's uh, a great leader, especially to us uh, young civil engineers. He's very passionate about Asher Technologies. He's dedicated to the cause, to helping the Filipino people. I'm very proud to be part of the team that started this Asher Technology. Being an engineer needs a heart. So if you put your heart into it, I think that's where I'm what you call excellent. I see Asher as a means for Filipino ingenuity to be recognized, not just in the Philippines, but also abroad. We don't just have a technology. Sabi nga namin, there is a gift of hope. We have the opportunity to save lives. This is something that we can offer to the world. Pag nakikita niyo yung ngiti sa mga labi niya, yun po yung hindi matutumbasa ng kahit gaano kalaking halaga ng salapi. Sabihan ka, maraming salamat sa ito kay kami. Yun po yung pinapremya sa Ruel Mojica, isang lingkod po from Cavite State University. Ang ating local coffee farmers ay kanakaabang sektor bilang sa poorest among the poorest. So sabi ko, mag-provide ako ng isang equipment para i-process nila yung sarili nilang produce at sa kanila ibenta. Ang Brabura Roasting Machine ay binuo natin para sila po yung nabang host of the produce roasting machine na locally available, locally produced at uh, customized. Hindi lang po doble, hindi lang po triple yung magiging halaga noong kanilang produkto. Ako po kasi ay anak ng coffee farmer. Nakapag-aral po ako at nakapagtapos at nabigyan naman napakaraming opportunities dahil po sa pagkakape. Yun po yung nag-motive sa atin. Makakapag-angat sa antas ng pamumuhay ng mga local coffee farmers natin. Yung Brevora Roasting Machine, during its development, the method is participatory, meaning to really ask farmers what they wanted, what are their problems, and those are the inputs para the situation ng machine. Dinala po kami doon ng DAR para sa isang seminar, sa isang training. Doon po kami nagsimula, ma'am, ano ba yung tamang pagpuproseso, ano yung dapat mong malaman para po makapag create ka ng magandang kalidad na kape. Si Dr. Mojica po ang nasa likod lahat po ng iyan. Yung pong roasting machine, gig po na practical po sa aming mga coffee farmers kasi po napaka-affordable po nito. Tsaka ang easy-easy po niyang i-manage. Noon, nangupahal lang kami, pero ngayon sarili na namin, pati lupa. Dahil sa tulong ni Dr. kung ano mga uh, procedure nalalaman namin dahil sa kanyang kalaman para ibigay sa amin na pa Uh, hindi kami napabayaan. Ako yung nagpapasalama. Leadership ni Dr. Rowell is people-oriented. Hindi siya boss, eh. he's more of a leader who really is humble enough to talk to people. He entrusts that type of excellence to the people who work with. Ang lagi niya sinasabi sa amin is, ano na ngayon? What's the impact? So, ano may tutulong nito sa community? Developing a machine for people, being able to help them. Nakakatuwa kasi naipapasa talaga. 
ang isang excellent engineer para sa akin, may puso na nagmamahal sa kababayan at may puso na handang tumulong sa mga kababayan. No amount of money, success, prestige, or awards ang makakapagpasaya sa akin. Yung makita ko po na meron akong isa o dalawang tao na natulungan at sumaya at na-improve ang buhay, yun po yung mission ko, hindi lang para sa sarili mo, kundi para sa kapakanan ng ibang tao. Good morning, everyone. I am Jill Ramos from Manila Water Foundation, and I will be your host for today. In partnership with the Department of Science and Technology and the Philippine Technological Council, Manila Water Foundation welcomes you to the Engineers for Excellence webinar series. At this point, I would like to greet all of our participants from DOSC and PTC and their affiliate offices and organizations. Likewise, a great morning to all of the participants who are currently viewing our live feed on the Engineers for Excellence Facebook group and Manila Water Foundation's Facebook and YouTube pages. We are glad to be able to reach the entire Philippines with viewers as far as South Cotabato in Mindanao, Northern Samar in Visayas, and viewers from Benguet in Luzon. We are also joined today by engineers from all over the world representing the countries of Singapore, Indonesia, Japan, Oman, Saudi Arabia, and Papua New Guinea. Thank you for joining us. This three-part series aims to highlight the valuable contributions of Filipino engineers in our nation's fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Throughout the webinar series, we will feature the awardees of the Manila Water Foundation Prize for Engineering Excellence and their projects with the hope of encouraging more engineers and innovators to venture into research and development and to make their technologies accessible to the greater public and hopefully be part of the solution. For today's episode, we will focus on the theme, Engineers Supporting Frontliners. Our invited speakers for today are here to share their technologies and projects which have been helping our frontliners and likewise, ensure that we are able to adapt to the demands of a new yet better normal. But before we go into that, let's hear from one of our partners from DOST. Unfortunately, Yusek Brenda Nazareth Manzano, the Undersecretary for Regional Operations, will not be able to join us today, but she was able to send an equally reputable gentleman. So give the opening remarks. 
let us all welcome the Director of DOST Science and Technology In Information Institute, Director Richard Borgos. Good morning. And uh, yeah, I really want to reach out to all the participants of this uh, episode two of the Engineers for Excellence webinar series. Today is a really great day. The sun is out and I hope that you're all feeling okay. On behalf of our Undersecretary, Brenda Nazareth Mansano, my good friend, who sends her regrets that she cannot personally join you today, I would like to convey to you her message, right? So friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the second episode of the Engineers for Excellence webinar series. The Worldometer has reported that as of November 4, 2020, more than 1.2 million people have died because of COVID-19. And millions are still currently infected. And in the Philippines, although the number of uh, new cases has somehow gone down, the fact remains thousands upon thousands of our countrymen suffered and uh, some continue to suffer from the virus and its effects. Quite alarming also is the fact that we have already uh, lost a number of uh, doctors, nurses, and other frontliners because of the virus, right? So many lives have been lost and it is just simply so sad to imagine this happening, right? But life is not without hope. If we continue to work together in battling COVID-19 and trying to move forward past this pandemic, I am confident that we will succeed. On the theme, Engineers Supporting Frontliners, this webinar episode highlights how our engineers can help make service delivery safer for our frontliners in this time of the pandemic. And we are very lucky to be joined today by our esteemed speakers who will be sharing about their innovations. Dr. Francis Aldrin Uy, President and CEO of Usher Technologies, and Dr. Ruel Mojica, Head of Project Masks. Dr. Uy and uh, Dr. Mojica are testaments to the fact that anyone can make a difference if only he wills it. We just have to be innovative so that we can come up with solutions that will address the problems of our society. And this is relatively easier for all of you engineers. You already have the mindset and the skill sets that, need, that are needed in building things. It has been said that scientists investigate that which, is, which already is, but engineers create that has never been. You can do pretty much a lot of things. So I encourage you to use your skills and knowledge in creating more solutions to help our countrymen, especially our frontliners in this time of pandemic. Now let me leave you with my own personal take. The pandemic is something that yes, we never planned. We had to drop all our plans because the pandemic overwhelmed us, <clears throat> but it is not a dead end. It could be a very big hump that we have to overcome, but it is not the end of all things. We have to surpass this. And how do we do this? Well, number one, action word is pivot. I hope you remember that, pivot. So if you cannot get things done one way, try another way and you can pivot new ways of getting things done, all right? The second action word that I would like to leave with you is perform. We cannot leave behind our commitments to deliver solutions, to deliver services. We need to perform, right? The pandemic is not an excuse for non-performance. Maybe it will hamper our delivery systems, but it should not make it impossible for us to do so. The third action word is Excel, all right? And this is what the, uh, this prize for engineers 
this price for excellence is all about. Okay, so what is the solution to the pandemic? It is, of course, um, PPE, pivot, perform, and excel. Okay, so if you have a PPE, you will not only survive the pandemic, you will thrive through the pandemic. Good morning to all of you and welcome to this uh, episode two of the webinar series of Engineers for Excellence. Thank you, Director Burgos. It is truly a great honor to have you here today and thank you so much for reminding us through PPE to, per to pivot, to excel, and to perform. So it truly is an honor to be with you because you are such an admirable figure when it comes to promoting social good through the sciences. And you are right, Director Burgos, nothing can stop us during this pandemic in trying to, to find solutions to our problems today. So without further ado, let me introduce our first speaker for today. He is one of the four awardees of the prize during its most recent edition in 2019. He is a civil engineer by profession and is Mapua University's current dean of the School of Civil, Environmental, and Geological Engineering. He is also the founder and president of Usher Technologies, the first Mapua spin-off company derived from the Usher project or the Universal Structural Health Evaluation and Recording System of DOSC and Mapua University. The Usher ERI system is a 24-7 structural health monitoring online platform for infrastructures that greatly Im improves the preparation and response to strong earthquakes and typhoons. Aside from being an awardee of the prize, he was also honored with several other recognitions from well-respected institutions and government agencies. Among the most recent one is the David M. Consuni Award for Engineering Research this 2020 given by the Philippine Association for the Advancement of Science and Technology. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our first speaker for today, Dr. Francis Aldrin Uy. Good day. Asher Technologies is the first spin-off company from Mapua University. It is the result of a research project funded by the DUST and Pichard. The primary product of Asher Technologies is the Asher ERI. This is a 24-7 structural health monitoring system that is useful in our preparations for strong earthquake. This is the only Filipino made ERI in the market, which is more cost effective and provides value added features truly beneficial to building owners. this year we just started the full operation of Asher of the Asher spin-off we were very much eager to finally serve more communities but who would have thought that the next succeeding months will be something that we have never imagined Metro Manila and some parts of the country were placed on lockdown due to COVID-19 As a spin-off company trained to be agile in finding technological solutions, learning about deaths of more and more Filipinos was hard to ignore. We needed to do something. We need to contribute something. Then an opportunity to assist the Quezon City local government came with a passion to help day and night in just few days, we delivered the first locally made disinfection booth in the country, 
the go clean disinfection chamber. Sa City Hall na sentro ng response operations ng lungsod, naglagay na ng disinfection chamber, nagawa ng DOST, Usher Technologies at Mapua University. Ang lahat ng papasok kailangan dumaan sa foot bath na may decontamination solution bago makapasok sa mismong chamber na magsispray sa iyo ng disinfectant solution. Pang segundo lang kailangan sa loob ng disinfection chamber na ito at masasabi ikaw ay clean and sanitized na. Maglalagay ng mga tulad itong disinfection chamber sa mga ospital dito sa Quezon City. Kasi gumawa ng kumbaga, low cost at uh, local version natin dahil kailangan, kailangan natin ngayon to help combat na itong uh, problem natin sa COVID-19. This is an unprecedented event. This was very clear with our team. This is the reason why we immediately grabbed the opportunity that made the go clean chamber. The day we delivered and installed the chamber was a remarkable and a blessed day. We saw the big smile and felt the happiness on each person who tried to use the chamber. It felt like we already solved the COVID-19 problem. You will see the joy in their eyes that finally we have something to fight COVID-19. The truth is, this is just one of the many measures. The fight continues until today. We produced the first versions of the single and dual chambers that were even adopted by the Bacolod City through our long distance collaboration. Many government and private organizations became very interested with the chamber. These are the ways we saw and experienced this disinfection before go clean chamber. Then complaints from more and more individuals increased due to unstudied and improper use of various disinfection solutions. Because of this, our local authority came out with an advisory. Misting and spraying is not recommended. There is no enough evidence to support that spraying or misting would kill the new coronavirus. After this advisory, the support in making more go clean chamber was significantly affected. Fortunately, with the science and technology based approach and leadership of DUST to DUST Pichard, we were given the chance to conduct further studies to prove the effectiveness and safeness of the go clean chamber. One of the key elements of our go clean chamber is the disinfection solution. While others use sodium hypochlorite, hypochlorite or bleach that irritates our skin, the mucous membrane, and airways, Asher team, through recommendations, have initially chosen to use ethanol. In our further study, we finally settled with the use of a hypochlorous acid-based disinfectant solution, which is potent in healing the virus, but safe for the people, for people and the environment. Hypochlorous acid is a naturally occurring chemical that is produced by our neutrophils or the white blood cells to fight bacteria and inflammation after an infection or trauma. Hypochlorous is one of the only agents that is both non-toxic to the delicate cells that can heal our wounds while being lethal to almost all known dangerous bacteria and viruses that threaten our health. New studies are now giving more and more proof on the effectiveness of this solution and the method of spraying and misting and fogging. We were able to conduct actual and simulation tests of the chamber design to enable full body disinfection in seconds. With further study on the disinfectant solution, we have gathered enough evidence to prove effectiveness. Finally, through our end user survey, we were able to adopt further improvements. And finally, we have now GoClean version 2.0, a result of our further study supported by the DUST Pichard 
a quality engineered product. Just recently, after many months since the pandemic started, finally, the WHO acknowledges something that will further call for, for the provision of the GoClean Chamber. COVID-19 is airborne. COVID-19 can live on surfaces for hours and days. Fortunately, with the help of DUSTP shared, local government units and private sectors, we have deployed GoClean Chamber in at least 11 locations. There's more to our GoClean version 2.0. A new add-on to the chamber is the Hoklomac device. The chamber will now have the ability to produce its own potent and safe disinfectant solution for its daily operation. to the Go Clean As One initiative of Asher is the Gizmo, an easy-to-use portable device for disinfection of documents and bills. Also first in the deployment of a swab test boot. We call it the swabbing test boot. Swabe is a Tagalog term that pertains to the smooth design of the boot. This year's SONA, at the Congress, we saw the GoClean Chamber in action. In every crisis, there is opportunity. In this time of pandemic, there is also a great opportunity through science and technology to generate new solutions. Like the DOST, we hope that the whole of government while implementing measures for the country, will make decisions based on our science and technology. This is a time for science and technology to flourish. This is the time for us to believe in our own science, in our own technology. To give a final summary, to give a final summary of our story, here is a video on how we started in this Asher Go Clean initiative.
you want to know more about our five COVID-19 products, like the GoClean Chamber, please contact us. Let's go clean as one. Together, let's continue to usher a safer world through, through science and technology. Good day to all. Thank you very much, Dr. Oi. It really is so inspiring to see how you have responded so urgently and found ways to really help people feel safe and be safe during this time of the pandemic. So before we proceed to our second and last speaker for today, may I please remind our viewers to send their questions to our speakers through the comment section of this broadcast, either on the Engineers for Excellence Facebook group or Manila Water Foundation's Facebook or YouTube pages. Our panel will answer your queries right after the presentation of our last speaker. So let's move on to our next speaker. He is also among the 2019 awardees of the Manila Water Foundation Prize for Engineering Excellence. He is an agriculture, agricultural and biosystems engineer by profession and currently serves as the Vice President for Research and Extension of the Cavite State University in Indang, Cavite. He is among the most well-known coffee experts in the country who invented the Bravura coffee roasting machine, the first ever vertical and most cost-efficient coffee roasting machine worldwide. Through his expertise in coffee, he was able to support communities, establish a new livelihood opportunity despite the pandemic through capacity building sessions. Aside from this, he is also project lead for Project Masks, an initiative of local dressmakers in Cavite through the production of locally made reusable face masks. So let us all welcome Dr. Ruel Mojica. Yes, thank you very much, Ma'am Jill, for that kind introduction. A blessed Thursday morning, everyone. First of all, I want to extend my warmest and sincerest gratitude to the Manila Water Foundation for giving me this once-in-a-lifetime kind of opportunity. Since the commencement of the Manila Water Foundation Prize for Engineering Excellence 2019, the Manila Water Foundation has been very supportive of me especially in the promotion of my pet project named as the Brabura Roasting Machine. This is the first ever vertical coffee roasting machine intended for the use of small-scale coffee farming communities. But this morning, please allow me to share with you our experience in one of our completed projects in support to our battle against COVID-19 pandemic. It is with great pleasure and honor to present the wonderful accomplishment of our project masks. The project masks stands for manufacture and distribution of adequate face masks for the safety of key personnel and various frontliners. It is an extension project funded by the Commission on Higher Education to the tune of 2.4 million. It is a three month project which commenced last July 15 and ended on October 14, 2020. The success of Project Masks wouldn't be possible again without the funding support of the Commission on Higher Education and the presence of all the productive and committed members of the project team who possess superb skills and knowledge that greatly contributed to the success of the project. My project staff, Miss um, Lady Eileen Orsal and GJ Bart Bartolome, and project support staff, Engineer Rosalie Pellier and Elizabeth Legaspi, and uh, two project assistants, Arjun Brian Sabater and Julie Francine Bagay. To all these hard members of the team, thank you very much. 2020 has been a such a quite challenging and devastating year for the people of every country across the globe, including the Filipino people. The Philippines have already experienced volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, floods, strong typhoons, and the existence of the novel coronavirus, which is also known as the COVID-19 virus. Among those destructive and deadly de disasters, COVID-19 also possess a great threat as this infectious virus cannot be seen by the naked eye and may possibly attack at an unexpected time and place. 
And currently, a cure for this infectious disease is not yet discovered, which is why prevention protocols such as social distancing and wearing of face masks and face shields on public areas were established in order to minimize or stop the spread of the virus. A more coherent and concentrated effort that can help address the needs of the community should be established, especially when it comes to relief efforts and widen scope of emergency response in this time of pandemic. In relation to that, the Cavita State University, in its pursuit of delivering excellent service in this time of crisis, took a significant contribution which probably helped and still helping its community in preventing the spread and probable re-emergence and eventually lead to full recovery from the pandemic through giving away face masks for free. 50,000 individuals from the municipality of Indang, um, 5,000 uh, 5, frontliners, 9,000 workers, 1,000 LGU officials, 5,000 senior citizens, and 30,000 students were the priority target beneficiaries of the project. This project was initiated and done with the following goals. To provide additional support to the existing efforts of the local and national government in its quest to fight and eventually succeed in this battle against COVID-19 through the provision of pre-washable face masks to the frontliners and other community members. To aid selected small tailoring enterprises for the manufacturing or for the manufacture of 50,000 face masks needed. So the first outcome of the project is the enhanced capacity in preventing the spread of COVID-19. Aside from social distancing and personal hygiene, the use of masks is part of the preventive measures in addressing this pandemic. With additional masks, frontliners can be better protected while fulfilling their duties and providing essential services to the community. The second outcome is to provide additional income as aid in economic recovery. The production of masks is also an opportunity for the residents, especially the local industry, to have income while the country is recovering from the economic impact of the crisis. This could be a way of not only helping them earn for a living, but also increasing community engagement as they participate in the efforts to fight COVID-19. And uh, for our third outcome, the third outcome of the project masks is to increase the awareness on the proper use of face mask. Responding to threats of COVID-19 is immediate, but being informed on the proper way of using face masks to prevent spread of other types of viruses is necessary. This not only addresses the current pandemic, but can also help prevent spread of future infectious diseases as an informed community is being established. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, so let us, next slide. Let's, let us now proceed to the output that was delivered and accomplished by the project. So considering the main objective of the project, Project Masks has developed one functional design of washable and reusable face masks. It produced 70,000 uh, pieces of washable face masks, which were distributed to various frontliners and community members, and developed and created three IEC materials on how to make a simple mask, proper use and maintenance of washable face masks, and a mini book. The mini book, uh, showcases the experience of various frontliners and other members of the community during the time of pandemic. Let us now move on to the highlights of the, our project accomplishments. So project masks provided positive contributions to the welfare of the sectors of health, economic, socioeconomic, and education as it met the various goals set for the project. The highlights of accomplishment were divided into nine parts. So for the first highlight, it's engage project partners and tailor. The COVID-19 pandemic has really brought an unprecedented challenge, which has greatly affected the livelihood of the people. In order to address one of the goals of the project, which is to aid 
selected small tailoring enterprises for the manufacture of face masks. Identified tailors were visited by the project staff to discuss activities related to the project. It is essential for any organization to have a specific and precise vision which is derived from a conceptualized and formulated strategic plan. Aside from that, it is also important to have a shared understanding between every partner in order for a specific vision to be cohesive and unified enough for the project success in the future. So in relation to that, they were tasked to fill out a brief summary questionnaire that will help assess the impacts of the pandemic on their livelihood. So the next slide shows that 36 tailors from five different municipalities of Cavite were chosen from the project, specifically uh, one tailor from Amadeo, six from Indang, 10 from Tanza, and five from Trece Marquere City, and 14 tailors from Rosario. So the graph shows that there, there are more women tailors than uh, men that were selected. So for uh, the next slide, the two-layer face masks was designed which aims to protect the person from inhalable particles. The outer layer is a polycotton fabric that possesses hydrophobic properties to repel moisture. The second layer is a fusible pelon, a non-woven fibrous material that can fuse with other fabrics for enhanced filtration. Elastic bands loop behind the ears will be used to hold the face mask in place. The slightly hexagonal shape in the design helps to ensure good fit at, as it also comes in two sizes, small and large. The double-layered design of the face mask meets the requirements of breathability, durability, usability, and cost-effectiveness. After the design of the face mask, the materials for the production of face masks uh, were prepared and produced, considering the pattern and health guidelines provided by the health experts. Afterwards, the distribution of raw materials to tailors was done on a weekly basis with the assistance of our project st staff and field coordinators. Strict social distance, uh, distancing measures are observed to minimize contact between people. The production of face masks has been very efficient since the beginning of the project. So all of the activities were regularly monitored and products undergo true quality control measure. After the three months of project implementation, uh, from our expected output of uh, 50,000 face masks, uh, we delivered 70,000 washable face masks. So we were able to save money uh, from travel and meetings, so we convert that to additional 20,000 face masks. So the next slide shows the two pictures that, uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, shows the current samples or samples of our finished products. So actually we have uh, all in all eight colors, uh, red, blue, yellow, uh, gold, green, gray, uh, black, and uh, yellow, green, and uh, I think the other one is uh, uh, dark blue. The samples were tested for its uh, comfortability upon use. As one of the project deliverables, appropriate IEC materials in print and non-print format were created consisting of the following useful and brief information shown on our current slide. We also disseminated information through online platforms. The online platform, particularly Facebook, became a way of an easier and enhanced information transparency and community engagement of the project. All throughout the duration of the project, all activities that are being done by the team and partner industries were posted in the page. The Facebook page also served as the platform to educate people about the important measures that everyone needs to consider during the time of crisis. The Bayanihan spirit was also evident throughout the, con uh, the conduct of the project, from pra packaging, of, uh, pra packaging to the distribution of face masks to target beneficiaries.
the final phase of the project is the distribution of our washable face masks. So 37,000 face masks were distributed to local government unit of Indang and its uh, 36 barangays last September 11, 2020. So aside from that, the face masks were also distributed to five de uh, Department of Education schools in Indang, Cavite, one police station, 10 colleges and campuses, and to a number of uh, individuals within Indang community. Next slide, please. So looking at the next step after the completion of our project, so what would be our plans? As Mr. Edward Council once said, that if we could unfold the future, the world or the present would be our greatest care. So the essence of the project upon its commencement was not only just to produce a specific quantity of face masks as, indi as indicated in the proposal. Its significance and benefit mainly focus on helping the society in conquering the fight against the infectious and invisible virus by helping the people to survive in their daily lives, both physically and financially. So our first plan is to continue produce face masks, which will generate business enterprise for our local tailors and eventually provide a more secured livelihood for our tailors and community partners. The second one, is to put up a business enterprise for our local tail tailors, which simply means that the production uh, activities shall continue even after the completion of the project. Next slide, please. Yes, next slide. Okay, so next slide. Yeah, these plans are anchored on my personal goal, which is to help improve the lives of our countrymen. So next slide. As a recipient of the 2019 Manila Water Foundation Award for Engineering Excellence, I will take an extra step to pursue my commitment to excellence. Excellence can be built by the quality of our actions and the integrity of our intentions. With that, thank you very much, and to God be the highest glory. And to know more about the impact of our project masks, I would like to share with you a short video created by our hardworking project masks team. Salamat. Ano po ang nag-efekto sa inyo ng pandemya? Ano po ang nag-efekto nitong pandemya sa inyo? Ano po nag-effect ko sa inyo ng pandemya, sa inyong kabuhayan? Kasi nawalan kami ng sahod. Tapos, yun, nawala ng trabaho yung asawa ko. But we can do something to help them. It's 1C, verse 6. First, conceptualize. To help fight against COVID-19, the Commission on Higher Education, in partnership with Cavite State University, initiated Project Masks, which stands for Manufacturing and Distribution of Adequate Face Masks 
for key personnel and various frontliners. This aims to distribute 50,000 face masks to the frontliners in Tarvita. Second, consult the community. Local tailors were tapped and to engage in the project, providing additional income for their families in the midst of this crisis. Tapos sa talagay niya magiging tulong ng proyekt na ito. Yes, ako dito kasi ako ang ako ang pinapaalala ng mga kaya Thank you very much, Dr. Mojica, for that wonderful presentation. It really is so inspiring to hear your story because uh, so many Filipinos right now have lost their incomes because of the pandemic. And it's so inspiring to see you and your team give livelihood to a lot of Filipinos, especially in your town of Cavite, and that I'm sure all our viewers right now are so inspired to do the same. So at this point, we will now move on to the next and also exciting part of our session for today, the panel discussion with our speakers. So aside from Dr. Uy and Dr. Mojica, our panel will also be joined by Manila Water Foundation's Executive Director, Mr. Reginald Andal. And to facilitate our discussion, we invited a very special moderator for today. He is a certified sanitary engineer and civil engineer by the Professional Regulations Commission and is also registered with the APEC Engineering Registry, ASEAN Engineering Registry, and ASEAN Chartered Professional Engineering Registry. He is an active member of both the Philippine Society of Sanitary Engineers and the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers and holds the distinction of having served as national president for both professional organizations. The accolades he has received from these professional aggregations include Honorary Fellow, 
ASEAN Federation of Engineering Organizations, or AFEO, Fellow Philippine Society of Sanitary Engineers, Fellow Philippine Institute of Sanitary Engineers. His professional career now spans more than four decades in the field of water supply and wastewater in all facets of these fields, design, construction management, operations, and business. He is also among the first employees of the Manila Water Company, where he served as director for construction management, project management. He also became area business manager and general manager of one of its subsidiaries until his early retirement in 2012. He is currently the executive vice president of VA Tech Wabag Philippines, an EPC contractor for water and wastewater treatment plants. Aside from this, he actively supports the initiatives of the Philippine Technological Council and has been a member of its Accreditation and Certification Board for Engineering and Technology. He also represents PTC in several committees of AFEO, as well as in the Technical Working Group of the Manila Water Foundation Prize for Engineering Excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our moderator for today, Dr. Robert Liku. I mean, salamat, Jill, uh, for that wonderful introduction. Again, I'm Bob Likup. Uh, I'll be your moderator for this uh, segment. Uh, earlier on, uh, our viewers were requested to send in their questions to the uh, comment section in the, in the different applications. Likewise, uh, all registered participants uh, were requested to <coughs> send in their, their questions. We have received a lot of them, but uh, don't worry, we have lots of time uh, that our moderators will be able to respond to them or to these questions. Nonetheless, if there will be anything that cannot be answered in this, uh, in the remaining time of this webinar series, uh, the same will be replied to offline uh, by our resource speakers. Likewise, all registered participants will receive a summary of all the questions and answers that our speakers would have given. Um, right, for now, uh, I would like to call on, again on my fellow civil engineer, Dr. Uy, as well as Dr. Mori Moika to join me. Uh, also, we will be joined by uh, the executive director of uh, Manila Water Foundation, Mr. Reginald Andal. Good morning, Reds. Good morning, Dr. Hey, Bobby. Hey, hey. Uh, yeah, he will highlight uh, to us the importance of these types of projects, especially for the marg marginalized communities. Uh, can we now have our first question uh, coming? I think this is for Dr. Uy. Our local practice is to dilute a Clorox or sodium hypochlorite without exact proportion for disinfection. I just want to listen to your comment on this practice. Thanks a lot. Okay. Um, again, uh, good morning to, to everyone. Now, uh, an answer to, this, to that question. Um, well, first is that uh, uh, it is important that you have a chemist on board. Okay. So it's still, the, it's still important that uh, we, con we uh, rely on professionals uh, when it comes to uh, our our needs so it's very important uh well i'm not a chemist but we have been working with the uh, chemists and chemical engineers as well uh in this uh in the said project and uh i believe that uh um uh, that the uh, uh, solution that was mentioned uh it's not good no? for 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 people for disinfection that is why uh, based on our study, we uh, have settled with the uh, hypochlorous acid-based uh, uh, solution, which is uh, has been proven to be uh, very effective. Actually, it, it has already has its uh, use in 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 uh, the field of medicine uh, when let's say taking care of uh, wounds of a diabetic person, and also uh, this is also used by by dentists uh, when they do some sur uh, surgery. So there are already a lot of proof. Uh, now, now the question is uh, actually is wh why it, why since it's uh, um, uh, found uh, when since it has been there for for a long time, 
as the question is why is not being really used by 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 more people so uh and that's the reason why we we decided to really promote it as well with our disinfection chamber well actually alam naman natin na uh, ang, ang bawat uh, chemical may kanya-kanyang application uh, yung sinasabi ni Dr. U yung hypochlorous as hypochlorous acid can be applied directly to people at nang walang harm sa katawan whereas yung uh, the use of uh, chlorox and that kind uh, can be used uh, sa inanimate objects na nakasilya, mga environment, but not directly on people. Yun actually yung sinasabi ng uh, DOS, no, 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 DOH rather, when it came out with the, with the, with the pronouncement, that misting, actually nung una kasi yung misting na ginagamit before yung goklin ni Dr. Uy ay yung tama, yung hypochlorite, kasi that was yun ang kilalang kilala natin dati. Uh, even for emergencies. Pero may kanya-kanyang application, pag directly sa tao, I agree with Dr. Uy totally na dapat yung hypochloric, hypochlorous acid ang gamitin. Now for the next question, uh, for the second speaker, Dr. Uh, uh, Mojica, regarding face mask production. Face mask production has been, re has been reproduced based uh, on the guidance by DOH. As a filter, what is the least diameter of virus or bacteria it could filter in micron? You're, you're muted, uh, Dr. Well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Likop. Hi, Sir Reggie. Uh, hi, Sir Francis. Thank you very much for that question. But uh, honestly speaking, I cannot answer your question sorry about that because uh, we haven't uh, conducted any uh, test on that so ayoko pong magbigay ng uh, answer ng hindi na, na hindi scientific yung ating basis so hindi po namin na conduct yung uh, diameter ng mga virus na mapi-filter but um, i can assure you that uh, this uh, the fabric that we have used in uh, our face mask uh, uh, past the standards of uh, the DOH and uh, uh, other standards. But as to the diameter of the virus, uh, I cannot answer for that. Uh, yeah, okay, yes, that, that's good enough. Actually, it really gives you, kaya siya naman naka, iba, nakabuyang yung yes, mukha mo. Uh, naturally, <laughs> pag naglagay ka na ng barrier, di ba? Yeah. Eh, yes, ma sir. Ma-prevent yung pag-inhale mo nung, nung, yes, nung, but, nung COVID. Sir, Sir Likop, uh, that's a good idea. So uh, next time, I think uh, it can be used. Magandang input po yun doon sa ginagawa na. So thank you for the uh, reminder and thank you for the question. Uh, now this is for Manila Water Foundation. How important are these projects now? What positive impact can these contribute to society? So I think that will be for Reds. Yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. And of course, thank you, Dr. Francis and Dr. Ruel for joining us. And of course, for moderating um, this one, Dr. Likup. Well, for Manila Water Foundation, there are two main reasons why we're doing uh, this webinar series. One of which is to, of course, assist our awardees, Dr. Mojica and Dr. Uwe, in propagating the information about their innovative projects and technologies. Since they are our awardees, we will continue to support them to make sure that the commercialization process of their projects will be continued and will be fully supported by Manila Water Foundation. But on the second note is, we have actually um, produced this webinar series so that we can provide a platform uh, to showcase what our outstanding engineers have done for uh, contribution in combating COVID-19. We know that our engineers have their relevant innovative projects and technologies, but what's more important now is how these technologies can help people survive and go through this pandemic. 
that is why we're very fortunate that Dr. Francis Uy and Dr. Roel Mojica have really done very good projects. And these projects now through Manila Water Foundation are being shared with other NGOs, with other industries, so that we can top these technologies in order for us to continue saving the lives and protecting the lives of the communities and families. So that is where Manila Water Foundation can contribute on the projects that Dr. Uy and Dr. Moheka have done so far. Thank you very much for that, uh, Reg. Uh, well, it's not too long, uh, these two awardees of Manila Water Foundation never stopped uh, from innovating. Kahit na na-award sila uh, yeah. by Manila Water already, di ba? And uh, we can relate all of these new projects, uh, initiatives rather, uh, in response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Si Dr. Uy, uh, the first speaker, ang kanyang main project was about earthquake, uh, uh, or rather responding to earthquake. Niyanig, pag nayanig ka ng uh, mga lindol, he will respond to that. He is his inventory. Ngayon, niyanig tayo ng COVID, di ba? Niyayanig naman niya ng kanyang go clean yung mga virus na, na pwedeng umepekto sa atin. Di ba? Parang ganon. Ngayon kay Dr. Rowell naman, ay yung kanyang initiative ng Bravura ro Roasting Machine is really to help the farmers, the margin marginalized society. Ay, yun yung kanyang, yun yung kanyang uh, modelo. So in like manner, yung kanyang, invention, yung kanyang innovation about masks is also geared towards that, that goal of helping the marginalized in society. So napagandang mga both initiatives that are really uh, expanding further or expounding further their initial uh, projects that have, that have earned the awards of Manila Water Foundation. And the most likely, uh, because of these models, uh, our, uh, our, our, uh, what do you call that? Our, uh, part, our participant in this seminar will be inspired. Diba? So, sana may inspire. Now, for Dr. Mojica, can you share some updates regarding your Bravura Coffee Roasting Machine project? Uh, ah, yes. Uh, yes, uh, Sir Likop, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I wasn't, uh, ay, sige, sir, I wasn't able to present due to limited time about the Brabura. And thank you for this opportunity uh, to share with you about the Brabura roasting machine. Right now, it's in the commercialization stage. So a lot of uh, cooperatives and a lot of farmers are requesting for a... Uh, unit of Brabura roasting machine varying uh, capacities, may 2 kilogram, may 5 kilogram. And right now, I have a project with the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research, and we are developing uh, three variants of our uh, uh, cof uh, coffee blend, and we are going to use this Brabura roasting machine. Uh, we are supporting right now the... Um, uh, Mauco or the Magallanes Women's Association in Magallanes, Cavite. And we will uh, provide them with one unit of the Brabura roasting machine courtesy of the Department of Agriculture. So, malaking bagay po. And uh, a lot of uh, coffee enthusiasts like uh, the ones who, who will... Uh, uh, established coffee shops, nagtatanong po nung nagpapakustomize po sa amin noong coffee roasting machine. So ang maganda po dito, uh, bago po natin sila bentahan, may usapan na po ako kami nung manufacturer ko na uh, i-assess po muna natin yung needs noong ating uh, clients. Kasi karamihan, hindi po nila alam yung mga specifications. So ang ginagawa ko po, in-interview ko po muna personally yung ating mga clients. Then nagre-recommend po ako sa kanila ng appropriate na uh, capacity kasi meron po for coffee shop. Tapos magre-request sila ng 20 kilogram capacity. E ganito lang pala yung ine-expect nilang production. So somehow natutulungan din po natin sila na talagang yung uh, proper specification ng equipment natin, yun talaga yung kailangan nila. So, so far so good. And uh, one more thing sir, napakalaking bagay po ng Manila Water Foundation kasi simula po noong <laughs> na big, naging recipient po tayo, ang dami pong... Uh, Ang dami pong mga lumalapit sa atin, hindi lang yung bibili and even nagko-consult din para kumag-establish nga sila ng business uh, tungkol sa coffee. 
uh, na, nakakatulong po tayo. So malaking bagay po yung Manila Water Foundation. dati rate pag pinag-usapan ng kafe locally, Batangas. Ngayon, yes, Cavite, is, uh, Cavite is into the picture. Tapos dati yes, rate, pag pinag-usapan, Italia. Yan yung mga ano eh. Pero ngayon, uh, Cavite is uh, pumapasok na rin sa market. A follow-up question for Dr. Mojica. Do you recommend starting a business now on coffee? Nako. Yes, sir. Ako po, um, kahapon lang po, ito uh, fresh experience. Kahapon lang po, may kamiting po ako na manufacturing industry. Actually, estudyante ko po siya sa uh, statistics sa graduate school. So, nasa manufacturing company po siya. So, nagpa-plan po kami ngayon to put up a parang coffee Uh, parang store, parang store siya. Kasi hindi po naman nababawasan yung demand natin sa pagkain eh. Hindi rin nababawasan yung demand natin sa kape. Kasi kung minum tayo dati nung uh, walang pandemic ng five cups a day, ako ganun din pa rin yung iniinom ko ngayon. So, nag po kami na mag-put up ng hindi lang po for coffee, pero yung lahat ng products na produce ng ating mga farmers, i-improve po natin in terms of packaging. Then, Uh, magigi magtatayo po tayo ng isang retail store which will showcase lahat ng mga products nila. So direct po yung kuha natin doon sa mga local suppliers natin, tutulungan natin silang i-improve ang product. Tapos magtatayo po tayo ng uh, uh, retail store. So uh, meron na rin po kaming initial concept, ang tawag po doon ay eh, parang farmers outlet. Uh, so pagka po in next year at meron kayong nakita na Farmers Outlet, posible po na yun ay sinimulan natin ngayon. So, going back to the question na uh, very uh, timely ba na mag uh, uh, tatag ng uh, business sa panahon ngayon? Sa akin po, yes. Definitely yes. Kasi wala pong pinipiling panahon yung uh, business natin. Yan po eh, uh, although na dun yung risk, Uh, kasama po yan eh, kasama po yan. So, tingin ko, pagka-determined kayo at uh, gusto talaga ninyo, it's, it's high time na mag-tatag uh, ng sarili natin business. Especially sa coffee. So, kung kayo po ay mag-business uh, about coffee, uh, I'm very much willing to share my knowledge or expertise and uh, tutulungan po natin kayo. Actually, sa coffee ngayon eh... Okay, uh, my question. Ano po, for Manila Water Foundation, ano pong ginagawa ng MWF to help ngayong pandemia aside from this webinar? Wow. Thank, thank you for providing us this opportunity to share this program. Um, aside from continuing the support to our awardees or engineers um, in propagating their projects, um, Manila Water Foundation has a set already of programs anchored on its advocacy, which is WASH, or Water Access, Sanitation, and Hygiene. And during this pandemic, we have somehow pivoted some of our programs to make sure that you'll be able to provide relevant uh, interventions for our communities and families. The major program that we're doing right now is what we call WASH in Pandemic. This is really a, an intervention um, on three things. One, we construct hybrid hand-washing facilities, especially on high foot traffic areas. Second, we distribute hygiene supplies. And third, we conduct and even distribute info-educational materials on proper hand-washing. Because as we all know, part of the pub, uh, minimum public health standards aside from wearing face mask or face shield and aside from physical distancing, the most effective way to prevent the transmission of communicable diseases, including COVID-19, is proper hand washing. hand washing. So in order for us to be able to provide such access to the communities and families on infrastructure, supplies, and information, We provide all those things under our program, WASH in Pandemic. For all of those, uh, any other organizations or individuals who would like to support us on this uh, relevant project nowadays, um, please continue to um, 
contact us through our Facebook accounts and our email foundation at manilawater.com. So you can be a part of our initiatives. Our partners include Department of Health, Department of Education, and UNICEF Philippines. So that is the major project that Manila Water Foundation right now in support to the whole of nation approach of combating COVID-19. For Dr. Uy, now we have this question. How many go clean chambers have you installed nationwide? How can other LGUs and government agencies avail? Okay. Um, well, um, as of now, we have at least 11 locations wherein uh, go clean is, uh, is uh, located or being used. Um, we are working on, uh, say, a, a, a newer version of this. Because the idea really here is that, of course, though, of course, the fact that there is a, still an advisory from DOH and through the help of DOSTP shared and PCHRD, we're trying now to, I believe the term is to register the, the device. And I think that's the way to go. Because uh, for me, as a, as a technologist, uh, it's not just really uh well there's a process to be to be done and i i think this uh, is opportunity not just for us to combat the current covid-19 pandemic now but epidemic or pandemic could be something of maybe part of what you call the new normal so i think we need to continue to to develop the the technology the technology further uh, for us to be be more prepared uh, next time, that is always our our, <laughs> our hope. May it be earthquake, uh, landslide, flooding, typhoon, and now epidemic or pandemic. Uh, we hope that we learn our lessons. We let science and technology flourish. I think this is an important thing. So, of course, I understand government will have to regulate. Yes, but of course, uh, we also need the approach like DUSD, what is uh, what the approach of DUSD, the whole of government to provide the environment, the opportunity for our scientists, our technologies to be able to contribute and uh, pursue uh, what they believe they it would help our society. Actually, we're both the initiative and DOSD and now coupled with the, this Manila Water Foundation initiatives. Dati rate, yung mga invention ng mga Pilipino na hijack ng ibang bansa, di ba? Buti si Dr. Mojica at si Dr. Uy, itong kanilang mga inventions eh, dito sa Pilipinas nila pinaristro, di ba? Uh, so this is, I guess, for Dr. Mojica now. Suggestion lang po, sana as part of face mask production, should end up to management of used face mask uh, to consider not only health aspect but as waste to manage. Uh, so, that's another public information campaign. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, can you, can, yeah. Can you, can you comment on that, yes. uh, Dr. Well? Yes. Yes, ma. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, actually, um, isa sa consideration natin in the uh, design and production ng face mask natin, talagang kaya'y uh, washable, iniiwasan natin yung waste talaga. Uh, yung ating, apansin nyo naman, di ba, sa books sa mga balita natin yung uh, kung saan-saan na lang tinatapon noong mga gumagamit ng face mask yung uh, not, uh, yung hindi reusable na face mask so isa yun sa naging consideration natin and uh, um, hindi po lang po napakita yung uh, meron pong manual doon sir doon sa kasama yung pag, sa pinamimigay namin na face mask kung paano po yung proper care niya at paano po natin siya uh, gagamitin andun po lahat doon sa kasama po nung uh, uh, face mask na binibigay natin may simple manual po kung paano natin siya gagamitin at i-manage yung paggamit ng face mask actually bigla lang pumasok sa isip ko na normal na ginagawa nating Pilipino di ba pag damit pag hindi natin magamit ang nor anong normal na ginagawa uh, napupunta siya sa anong gamit di ba nagiging pasahan Yes. So, so di ba? So bago to pili mo yung expose to washable na na face mask na to. Pag talagang hindi mo na siya magamit, ultimately magiging basahan siya and matagal na siyang ginagamit at basahan bago mo siya i-dispose. So wala na siyang pangalib ng, di ba? Wala na siyang pangalib basically ng 
ng infection. Di ba? Yes, sir. And kung makikita nyo, sir, yung fabric niya, ang ganda eh. Ito po yung gamit ko araw-araw, kaya po medyo natutuwa din po ako kasi ang ganda niya. Tapos uh, uh, perfect po yung fit doon sa, sa mukha. Kaya parang pogi ka pa rin, sir, kahit suot mo yung face mask. <laughs> Yeah, actually kasi yung mga over-the-counter na ibang face mask, uh, yung fit ko minsan dito sa tenga, may maigpit. So, maghabang mo so, sumasakit yung tenga mo eh. <laughs> uh, ganun yung ano eh. Ganun yung uh, ano. For Dr. Uy, with the changing times, how can Aser continuously help society, society are the support that you need to continue? Okay. Um, uh, right now, our technology roadmap uh, leads us in making Azure uh, a multi-hazard uh, disaster risk reduction platform. And uh, I, um, this is because actually current, uh, we are working with uh, some international organization of, uh, uh, on this. And uh, initially we started with earthquake, but then we finally realized that there are, uh, when it comes to disaster risk reduction, there are similarities whether the, the force of nature we're talking about is earthquake or uh, volcanic eruption, landslide, or flooding. So we're trying to, to develop Azure uh, to be uh, that kind of platform. Uh, now, of course, we need the help of organizations like we have this good opportunity with, uh, with UN now. Actually, we're in a com sort of competition now the UN in with UNOPS, uh, uh, and I think on Friday we're going to make a pitch uh, with with UN uh, or UNOPS, and hopefully this will help us uh, bring Asher the benefits of Asher to to other countries and move it forward to that kind of platform that I was uh, that I mentioned. So we need the help, of course, of still the government on this because most of the projects that we are into would require the partnership and the cooperation of, of government in, in, di in different levels, the national and, and as well as the local. So it's important for us to be able to get their support. And the only thing that we're actually uh, we're pointing out is that when it comes to, to disaster and, and uh, uh, program and initiative, which is the say disaster risk reduction, uh, it is important that we uh, make use of our local technology, develop our technology. I think that's the only way we can really be sustainable and uh, really successful in preparing our, our country, our communities to, of course, what whatever would come uh, in the future. So we need your help. Please patronize our Filipino-made technologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, sa totoo lang itong, just like uh, you two, are now trying to complement its other uh, in the fight against COVID, di ba? This is actually not a fight of one person. This is a fight of everyone. So in like Monday, in promoting all of your products, uh, uh, the more the supporters you have in terms of users, di ba? The more your, your initiatives, you will, uh, mas dadami yung mga, yung mga initiatives. Uh, ganun lang. Then you, we have Manila Water Foundation. At salamat, dati rate, walang recognition yung mga kapwa natin mga engineers. Ngayon meron na. Okay, uh, this is from Melvin Esguera. How effective is this sat ah, I think this is for Dr. Mojica. How effective is satin cloth in filtering the COVID virus considering the liquid like water that could not easily pass through it? Okay. So, uh, yes sir. Uh, thank you Melvin. May mga studies na ginawa na for sure yung ating Department of Health dito. Kaya uh, sinasabi nga nila na minimum standard yung pagsusot natin ng face mask. So, uh, how effective? Mahirap siyang i-measure. Yeah? Pero I think um, with, the, with the material that we used in this face mask, face mask I think uh, kung gamitin mo siya ng tama, 100% effective and safe ka po. So, uh, following the proper pot protocol plus the social distancing, so I think uh, safe naman po tayo. Double layer naman yung mask mo, di ba? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
two layer face mask po siya double layer so uh, okay um Doc Aldrin, dun sa related lang dun sa unang uh, tanong sa'yo, initially ba, hypochlorous acid, gagad ang kinonsider nyo? Or did you, did you play with any other chemicals? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, at first, we uh, the one that rec was recommended to be safest, especially when uh, in March, when it started, uh, because of urgency, is ethanol. Okay, uh, ethanol. But our problem, yeah, but our problem with ethanol, of course, one is you compete with other use yeah, yeah. which is in hospitals that's a problem second is uh, also the it requires uh, extra precautionary measures because it's flammable so that's where we decided to really look for an, an another uh, so, uh, disinfectant solution and uh, it's good that we we found out about hypochlorous uh, acid and uh, actually uh, in the presentation we even uh, move further uh, move forward and come up with a prototype of a device which we call Hoclomac that uh, can produce the analyte. So we can, so that at first the idea is to attach it to the chamber so that the chamber will just automatically uh, produce its own disinfectant solution. But what we did it is we made the prototype portable that it can be on also a standalone. Let's say you want it in your office or, um, in your workplace or in even in your in your homes, then it, it can be also uh, be used. It's still a prototype. We're, we're working with the uh, manufacturers now to uh, uh, make it further smaller, portable, and uh, the, so solve the 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 problems of what you call manufacturability. That's also one of the problems of technologies uh, in the in the country. Uh, when it comes to manufacturability and mass production. So, I mean, you have a good equipment or a, a, port, a prototype device, but when you go to manufacturing, it's, again, another challenge on how to really mass produce. Okay. Uh, for this, for, I think we have uh, for the second to the last question. For the speakers, what challenges did you face in implementing your projects? What hmm. inspires you to continue such projects? Uh, Dr. Mojica muna, balik ka rin natin. All right. Dr. Well, nakamute ka. Okay. Ay. Ay okay na, okay. You, you go ahead please. Aa. Uh -huh. Ah, yes, sir. Sorry, erratic po yung ating signal. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, um, yeah. The greatest challenge using, uh, during the implementation of the project, it's the time. So the time to respond. Imagine um, our project uh, is only due for three, uh, three months. Uh, and uh, alam nyo naman, sir, government process, procurement ng materials, and uh, lahat, uh, even yung pag- uh, kuha ng mga suppliers, ng mga tailors, pero wala pong imposible eh. So, ako nung una, sinabi ko, parang imposible tayo makaproduce ng 50,000 face masks sa loob ng 3 months, considering na government procurement, bibili ka ng mga materials for that, hahanap ka ng mga tailors. Pandemic time pa, hindi mo alam kung saan ka kukuha ng mga mananahi. So, yun yung aking pin Alam nyo po, uh, God will uh, provide talaga eh. So lahat po ng uh, uh, kailangan namin doon sa project, andun, uh, dumating siya ng tama. And ang uh, maganda pa dito, sir, yun nga, uh, based on my report, 50,000 lang yung ina-expect sa atin since nakatipid tayo doon sa uh, mga expenses natin sa travel, na-convert pa natin yung uh, savings natin sa additional na 20,000. So, mas marami po ang uh, nag-benefit, mas marami tayong naibahaging tulong sa ating mga tailors. So, yun po yung nag-silbing inspiration sa atin. At sabi ko nga din po doon sa aking buong team, uh, hindi tayo titigil kahit tapos na yung project Makita nyo, sir, na nagpapasalamat sa inyo yung mga local tailors dahil natulungan natin. Talaga pong, uh, yun nga yung video natin, kahit napakasimple noon at saka medyo hindi pa maayos yung pagkakagawa. 
tagus sa puso nyo yun, sir, eh. Kasi actual footage yun noong mga tao na talagang sabihin na natin na nahihirapan dahil dito sa pandemic. So yun sila po yung inspiration natin. Kaya patuloy po tayo sa paghahanap ng solusyon. Uh, no, no, wala na. Unstable yung uh, ano ni, uh, ni uh, Dr. Rowell. How uh, about you, uh, Doc, Doc Aldrin? Yes, uh, Sir Bob. Um, uh, in, in the case of GoClean, um, first, tama po yun. Ah, yung iba kasi yung situation or yung condition if you when it happened no, in, in March. Um, and uh, there was a lot of restriction and, and, and limitation, no? Uh, limitation where on the on where you can work uh my quarantine naka lockdown also on the time uh but it's good that um we have that opportunity with Quezon city government or with the uh, mayor joy belmonte uh, who gave us that uh, opportunity to to work with them so the next thing to do is to grab that opportunity and this is uh, uh, something that I think uh, Yusek Guevara of the UST uh, mentioned that uh, startups, uh, startups are, are agile. No? I think this is uh, something that we also need to consider uh, maybe in, uh, in the future. Uh, my startups, kasi we're, we're, we're uh, trained really to, to act no? immediately or with the urgency and so um, so it is. Uh, we're 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 fa we're quicker on or uh, faster in that manner. Uh, and uh, the the thing is, uh, we just uh, came up. We, we came up with the with the with the with the device. Uh, and this is not just uh, like a science project in school. Or we we have made it to the point that there's research and engineering with with it. No, so hindi lang po kami nagproduce. Pinag-aralan po naman engineers namin yun, but in a very short span of time, they really sacrifice. Uh, that's why we say day and night. And ang isang kinumit kasi namin dito is, uh, of course, there were a lot of reservations at, at start. Diba? Kasi anong gagawin natin? Wala, saan tayo kukuha ng materials? Sino magbibigay sa atin? Sino magpupundo sa atin? Okay, so isa-isa, uh, na, na-solve na -sold naman yon. Pero ang isang napag-usapan namin sa, sa team is that this, this, is, this doesn't happen every day, no? Diba? The last time was the span, maybe the Spanish flu, uh, 1918. Diba? Tagal ng panahon. So, kumbaga, in our lifetime, I mean, lifetime, this is the, the only time. And and I said, we said, let's grab the opportunity. Let, let's do something. Let's uh, contribute. Kahit anong pwede natin ilabas dyan. So, gawin natin. So, yun. Uh, we started to go clean. Then after that, we thought of the swabbing booth. Then uh, the, the hoklomak. Then the gizmo. Well, if you have that commitment, kusang lalabas eh, yung mga iba pa solutions na pwede mong, uh, uh, pwede mong gawin. So, yun, in, in our case, yun, yun po. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Dr. Uh, Reg, on the part of Manila Water Foundation, uh, can, you, can you also give us uh, some response to that, that, that question also? Yeah, um... While the question is directly related to the project of Dr. Uy and Dr. Mojica, for Manila Water Foundation, we acknowledge that the mobility is really a concern uh, during this time. Um, for us as well, um, it's really weighing the safety of our Manila Water Foundation mm -hmm. talents, but at the same time, taking really this opportunity when Manila Water Foundation is direly needed to provide the necessary support to our communities and families. Amin po, marami nang naghihirap eh. Marami nang may mga namamatay na. At mula sa perspektibo ng Manila Water Foundation, ito ay isang pagkakataon para magkatulong-tulong tayo, magkasama-sama tayo. That's why I'm very glad that we have Dr. Uy and Dr. Mojica now. Because for our viewers, for our audience, this is a clear demonstration of what an excellent engineer is. Engineers have always the solution to every problem. But how it will become more relevant, that's more important. And this is the right time for the engineers to be more relevant. When 
engineers can really provide the necessary solutions to the problems, to the current problems that we have. Um, that is why Manila Water Foundation would really like to have this platform so that we can showcase how Dr. Uy and Dr. Mohika has been supporting our frontliners. So bumabalik po kami sa idea at bumabalik kami sa aming motivasyon na kami ay isang conduit of what an excellent engineer can provide to the society. So whatever challenges that we have been facing, since March lockdown, it has been what eight months, nine months, but since, but still, Doctor Mohika and Doctor Uy are just um, proven um, realities that engineers can still do a lot more, even while we are on lockdown and even while we are facing a lot of challenges. So, from Manila Water Foundation, we will continue to support our excellent engineers who are trailblazing um, the ways we can really support protect the lives of the communities and families. Thanks, thanks, Reg. Napakadali ng oras. Uh, uh, now, uh, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo. At uh, this time, at uh, this point, uh, can we ask our panelists uh, for the final uh, message? Uh, uh, as well as, uh, as invite all fellow engineers to join the Manila Water Foundation. Pero, so before that, you answer, sagutin nyo muna, dire-direction nyo na lang. Ano po ang mensahe nyo sa mga frontliners natin? Paano po tayo makakatulong para sa kanila? Then you proceed to the invitation to our fellow civil engineers to join the Manila Water 2021, Manila Water Foundation 2021, uh, Engineering for Excellence uh, RAD. Uh, Dr. Uy Daman. <laughs> okay. Uh... Well, para sa ating mga frontliners, sa lahat nating mga kababayan, no? uh, ang Azure Technologies po ay nabuo sa pagtutulungan ng mga ng Mapua University at ng ng BOST ng ating gobyerno. At mukhang naiatang na po sa amin yung uh, pagtuklas at pagpalaganap ng mga technology na uh, has something to do with tinatawag nating disaster uh, risk reduction. So makakaasa po kayo na pagpapatuloy po namin na gagamitin namin mga kaalaman, aming kakayanan para mapagpatuloy ang aming ginagawa at at makapagtuklas pa na makatuklas pa ng mga bago pang mga innovations or inventions na makakatulong po sa atin. Kasi sa ang aming pong adikain ay, ay nawa. Tayo po ay patuloy na gumawa ng sariling nating teknolohiya. Yung, yung teknolohiya po ng Azure, tatandaan po natin, hindi lang po para ito sa Azure Technologies ang kapakinabangan. But sa larangan o sa area na aming ginagalawan, ito po ay may tuturing na para sa buong, uh, buong bayan. No? Kasi mapakalawak po ng, uh, ng area na, na aming ang ginagalawan pagdating ng disaster risk reduction. So makaasa po kayo na pagpapatuloy po namin ang aming gawain. At uh, sa ating mga engineers po dyan, no, sa mga engineers, mga professional engineers po natin, uh, inaanyahan niyo po namin kayo, nasamahan niyo po kami, at uh, sumali po kayo dito sa uh, uh, Manila Water Foundation Engineering Excellence uh, Award. At uh, para naman, no, ang ipamalas natin ang galing ng ng Pilipino, ng galing ng ating lahi, sabi nga. No? At uh, tayo naman ay ating namang ipagdiwang yung kagalingan na, na yan ng, uh, ng Pilipino. Yeah, thanks for that, Doc Aldrin. About you, uh, for you, Doc, Doc Roel? Yeah, uh, my message for our frontliners, uh, to, to all our frontliners, don't give up. Wala pong susuko sa atin. Kayo, tayo po ay nasa middle ng battle against COVID-19 pandemic. Tandaan po ninyo na hindi kayo nag-iisa. Andito po ang uh, Filipino engineers na kaagapay ninyo para sa battle na to. So, uh, ang importante po sa atin, andyan tayo, magtutulungan tayo, uh, kikilos ang bawat isa sa atin, uh, gagawin natin yung part ng bawat isa sa atin at uh, hopefully, by God's grace, sama-sama tayong mananalo or uh, we will win this battle. So, salamat ng marami sa inyong lahat 
at uh, andito lang ang kababayan yung lahat ang mga Pilipino at uh, suporta at uh, kasama niyo sa laban na ito. So with this sir, I would like to encourage our uh, my fellow engineers to take a step forward and join the search for the Manila Water Foundation's prize for engineering excellence 2021. It is not only for your personal and professional growth, but definitely for community advancement for in every award is an affirmation that we can do more to help each other and we can grow together. So salamat po uh, mga bayaws and uh, to my fellow engineers. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much, you. Manila Water Foundation. Thank you very much for that. Sana sa susunod na series, face-to-face -face na tayo at wala ng pandemic. Uh, it has been an honor to have been your moderator for this segment. Uh, at uh, again, this is Bob Liko. Thank you and good day. Uh, over to you now, Jill. Thank you, Sir Bob. And thank you to our very excellent and big-hearted panelists as well. Not to mention handsome. O, kasama kayo dyan, Sir Bob. So, but before we move on to the next part, I would like to bring in once again our speakers. Ayan, hello, Dr. Mohika and Dr. Uy. So, on the first episode po, I asked the speakers one final question and I would, would like to ask uh, the same question to you today. Ayan, so parang Mr. Universe lang po tayo this morning. <laughs> so, Dr. Uy and Dr. Mohika. I'm curious, how did winning the Manila Water Foundation Prize for Engineering Excellence impact your career as an engineer and as an innovator? Maybe you can start, uh, Dr. Uy? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, I think winning the, the award is, for me, is actually more of a tall order. Okay, A tall order for us to to continue our our vision uh, our mission to make more communities safer and and more resilient uh, it also confirms that uh, it's a confirmation that our team all our members our staff our engineers have really found a very have found a very good purpose for us in our lives and our careers our professional careers and it also humbles us at the same time to know and understand that we still have a lot of things to learn a lot of efforts to to exert to make uh asher a credible organization the when it comes to uh, safety uh we have now plans to make Azure system, as mentioned, as a multi-hazard disaster risk reduction platform. So uh, the award, uh, again, is, just, is a tall order. And our team accepts the challenge. And that's what drives, motivates us every day to move forward, to, to think better, to do more uh in our uh uh daily operation and uh in return i uh, uh please no? patronize our filipino made technologies and products no? uh given that you are you give your engineers the award i my my hope and my appeal to every filipino Eh, gamitin po natin yung sariling atin no uh, bigyan niyo naman ng pansin po yung ating mga yung sarili nating gawa uh, and together let us usher a safer philippines with our filipino technologies thank you po thank you dr uy nako nakakatuwa pong marinig sa inyo na you're not resting on your laurels na after winning the award lalo po kayo yung na motivate pa na tumulong at to be more committed in your uh, calling no as engineer as an engineer to to bring in a safer philippines to usher in a safer philippines 
So, ayun, nananawagan po kami sa, sa lahat po, no? Let us please um, subscribe to our Filipino-made products and technologies. Katulad ng mga inventions po ni Dr. Uy and Dr. Mojica and many of our engineers. Kasi po, lalo na ngayon na pandemya, no? It really is so important at this time to to really stick to our own product so that we can boost our economy. So, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uy. And I believe Dr. Mojica is also with us. So, Dr. Mojica, yeah. same question po. Yes, thank you, Ma'am Jill. I always believe that uh, an award like a medal is not something that you hang on your neck, but uh, instead should be kept in our hearts to drive our hands and feet to serve more and to serve better each time. So this is how the Manila... So professionally, it opened doors for more opportunities to advance my career as an engineer, as an innovator, as an ASEAN engineer with promotion, more collaborative projects, and extensive networking. But more importantly, I am very blessed because personally, it had deepened the way I see myself. Ayan, medyo intermittent po ang signal lang ni Dr. Mojica. So it's good to hear from him, no, say that this award actually was stamped on his heart na hindi lang siya parang display but really it has reignited this um, mission to help others as an engineer. Ayan. So balikan na lang natin mamaya si Dr. Mojica. Mukhang nag-freeze uh, na po siya ngayon at this time. So thank you again, Dr. Uy and Dr. Mojica. Perhaps later we can go back to Dr. Mojica once his internet signal has come back. So thank you, Dr. Uy. So right now, are we going to read some comments? Um, thank you so much to all our viewers. No, uh, We really, really appreciate your time for joining us today. So here's a comment from Mr. Ali Molina that is inspiring quality of our actions and integrity of our intention. So this is the, this was the last message of uh, Dr. Mojica during his presentation. Um, agree ako dyan. Sobrang very inspiring yan, no? especially at this time na we need to guard uh, the quality of our actions and integrity of our intentions. Ayan. So another comment from Ms. Carmen Danlay Tutanes. The webinar is very informative. Thank you so much, Ms. Carmen. And we're glad that you find this seminar very, very informative. And we are really hoping that you are having a fun learning experience today with our panelists. Another comment from Mr. Carl Christian Enage. Thank you for finding solution and continually helping our community in fighting this pandemic. Yeah, and thank you so much to all our Filipino engineers. Uh, katulad nga lang sabi ni Sir Reg, napaka-importante talaga mga engineers during this time in coming up with solutions and really finding the, the right suppliers and uh, making it so that we can respond more urgently to the needs of our times. Ayan. Another comment, um, again, from Mr. Ali Molina, proud to be a Filipino engineer. Ayan. So at this point, I would like to move on to the next part of our program. So let us all have, once again, our executive director for his closing message. Please welcome Mr. Reginald Andal. Thank you, Jill. Good day, everyone. I would like to thank you all for joining us today for the second episode of the Engineers for Excellence webinar series. It's only been nine months since we awarded the third batch of awardees of the Manila Water Foundation Prize for Engineering Excellence, or the prize. But we have gathered today to continuously push forward our intention foster the ingenuity of Filipino engineers. As many of you may know, we have given recognition to 10 Filipino engineers for the past three rounds of the prize. But aside from the prizes and recognition that they highly deserve, we also want to extend our increasing support by providing platforms where they can promote their projects and technologies. And now, we are in the middle of a pandemic. This is our reality. This is why we are glad that you have given us the opportunity to showcase the innovative and relative, rele relevant projects of Dr. Francis Aldrin Uy and Dr. Rowell Mojica. 
And we all agree that there has been much to be gained from today's learning session, which demonstrated the very essence of engineering excellence, maximizing the use of science and technology for the good of others, our fellow Filipinos. As how DOST and DOST STII put it, let us promote science for the people. The unprecedented public health crisis recognizes and reaffirms the urgent need for all of us to work together. This also presents the opportunities for our engineers to build a resilient future and save and protect the lives of more Filipinos through the advancement and implementation of science and technology and eventually the agenda of our core sustainable development. Let me conclude these remarks by acknowledging the support of our program partners, Manila Water Company, Manila Water Philippine Ventures and Subsidiaries, Department of Science and Technology, and the Philippine Technological Council. And of course, the great work of spearheading this initiative, my colleagues in Manila Water Foundation, Shelly Masaho, Princess Bugay, Dil Ramos, Sandy Sandoval, Alexis Pingol, and JP Antonio. With that, I hope that all of us will take inspiration from our outstanding Filipino engineers. And I wish that you will join us again in our third episode on December 3 of the Engineers for Excellence webinar series. We will be joined by another set of the prize awardees, Dr. Ricardo Orhe of, Philip, of Phil Rice and Dr. Michael Grigasin of Filmec on the topic engineers supporting backliners, especially our farmers. Let, let us all stay safe and healthy. Thank you and have a great day ahead. Thank you, Sir Reg, for that wonderful message. And just like what Sir Reg mentioned, we hope to see you again in the upcoming and last episode of the Engineers for Excellence webinar series on December 3, where we will talk about the roles of engineers in supporting our backline workers during this COVID-19 pandemic. To register and for further details, please visit Manila Water Foundation's social media accounts. We also invite everyone to answer a short evaluation form by scanning the QR code flashed on your screens. A link to the survey platform is also posted in the comment section. An electronic certificate will be issued as soon as you have accomplished the evaluation form. Please be reminded that this evaluation form is accessible only until 11.59 p.m. tonight. We would also like to invite all engineers tuned in today to join the Engineers for Excellence Facebook group to get exclusive tips and updates for the upcoming 2021 run of the Manila Water Foundation Prize for Engineering Excellence. It's been an honor to be your host for today. On behalf of Manila Water Foundation and our partners DOST and PTC, we hope you had a fun learning experience. Again, I am Jill Ramos and see you on our next webinar. Goodbye and see you.